Say, would you mind if I had one of these teas? Help yourself. Begging your pardon. Hmm? What is it for? I'm sorry to bother you, but you look incredibly familiar. Have we met? Depends. You're not a politician, are you? No. Didn't think so. You look too clean. I'm William Jennings Bryan. You may have heard of me if you've read a newspaper in the last 30 years. Of course! Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Bryan. My name's Alfie Banks. I work with George Merrick on the Coral Gables Development Project. I'm sure that's very exciting work, young man. You tell Mr. Merrick that this pool of his is quite enjoyable. Could I be bold enough to ask you for a huge favor? I'd say that is fairly bold, seeing as we've just met. But boldness is a quality I admire. Ask away. The thing is, Mr. Merrick is having a ceremony tomorrow to unveil the new line of streetcars. And I think it would be an asset to have someone as famous as you there to give a speech. Not interested. Streetcars are just the cousins of railroads. I don't quite follow. Now is not the time for a debate, son. Suffice it to say that the corporations running the streetcars don't represent the interests of the common man. And I very much care about the interests of the common man. So you'll understand if I politely decline your proposal. Mr. Bryan, if you would just listen a moment, I think I can show you that speaking at the event won't be such a terrible thing. Well, the least I can do is offer you the courtesy of my ears. Have at it, boy. Right. You think I should speak at this rally sponsored by the Streetcar Corporation. I eagerly await your reasoning. You're wrong about the Streetcar Company, Mr. Bryan. They have nothing to do with this rally. Don't be naive, boy. Of course they're involved. These major corporations all have an invisible hand in every proceeding. If you think otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. Now, what exactly is the point of this rally, if I might ask? We're trying to help those potential buyers who are still on the fence make a final decision. I see. So you want me to apply that final push? I'm not sure I'm the right man to help you. My background is law, not sales. I'm sure you understand my caution at lending my support. What sort of image is Merrick trying to go for? He's trying to portray Coral Gables as the city of the future. The future, eh? What exactly is the future? All the modern conveniences before anyone else has them. Of course, like those streetcars you mentioned. I'm still not crazy about supporting them, though. Listen, Mr. Bryan, I'm not going to take up much more of your day. I just want you to consider my offer one last time. Your presence at the rally will ensure that the people leave with the proper ideals and finely tuned moral compasses. Hmm. Well, when you put it that way, it does make the prospect sound considerably more appealing. So what do you say? I'm sorry, young man. You have a good way with words, but I'm afraid you just didn't make a compelling enough argument. Begging your pardon. Hmm? What is it, boy? If I'm not mistaken, you're quite the advocate of prohibition, aren't you? You bet your buttons I am. These freewheeling wets must be going through a tough time, not having been able to drink in all these years. I was having a conversation with one just last week. He was complaining about limiting freedoms by not allowing the enjoyment of alcohol. Do you know what I said to him? I said, well, if you need it so much, why don't you just call up your pal, Charles Darwin, and have him evolve you an extra hand to slap yourself in the face? Ha! You should have seen the look on him. I love throwing their ridiculous rhetoric back in their faces. Some weather we're having, isn't it? Hot as blazes, but my doctor told me I needed to move south for my health. Aren't you uncomfortable lying out here in a full black suit? Eh, we all need to make sacrifices in life, young man. In any case, I have removed my socks and shoes, which helps. The pool is kind enough to provide lockers. Not having to carry around my personal possessions is quite helpful. I'll let you get back to your sunbathing. Appreciate it.
Begging your pardon. Hmm? What is it, boy? I thought you might be interested to know that Jeremiah Miller will be speaking at tomorrow's dedication ceremony for Coral Gables. What? Miller? I thought that booze hound had been disgraced out of office a few years back. Apparently not. He's the main speaker. Well, not if I have anything to say about it. You tell Merrick that I'll be the one giving the speech tomorrow. I am not letting his community be tainted from the get-go. I'll be sure to pass on the message. I'll let you get back to your sunbathing. Appreciate it. George, I've managed to recruit William Jennings Bryan for the rally tomorrow. You don't say. That's fantastic. Excellent work, Alfie. This will be a great boon to publicity. Make sure you're there bright and early tomorrow. I want you standing next to me when we make the announcements. You've got it. See you tomorrow. And so you can all look forward to a bright future in this, the City Beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. May I say it's been an honor and a privilege to have you here with us today. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude and launch our fleet of streetcars, bringing Coral Gables into the modern age, there's one more matter to attend to. I want to take this opportunity to thank Alfie Banks. Without his hard work, Coral Gables wouldn't even be close to where it is today. Which brings me to the last order of business. As you all know, we have been incorporated as a city, and every city deserves a mayor. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to announce the first mayor of the city of Coral Gables. Edward Doc Dammers. Thank you, George. It's an honor. People of Coral Gables, allow me to express my excitement at this wonderful opportunity. As your mayor, I guarantee a standard of living like no other. Would you excuse me? Well, well, if it isn't Alfie Banks. Fancy running into you at the Biltmore. I thought you'd picked up and gone back to New York. Where have you been? I've been keeping a low profile on purpose, if you must know. Oh, come on. You can't still be sore about being snubbed for mayor, can you? How did you- I'm a journalist, Banks. It's my job to notice things. It's been over a year. Can't you let it go? It's just, I feel like all the work I've put in over the past few years has meant nothing. Honestly, what do I have to show for it? I came down here to restore my family name, to honor my father's legacy. And instead, I've just been going around running errands like a fool. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, Banks. If you're looking for a pat on the back every time you make a sale, Merrick's outfit might not be for you. Not to say he's ungrateful. He's just extremely focused, and he knows how to take advantage of his resources. Take advantage is right. Anyway, I hate to put a damper on your pity party, but I came here tonight as a reporter, and I think you ought to know there's a big storm headed this way. What? Yep, they're saying it's going to be a pretty big hurricane. You might want to get home while you still have one. I'm sure they're just exaggerating. Wouldn't they have said something sooner? Weather's not easy to predict. Well, I appreciate the warning, but I'm sure things will be fine. Suit yourself. I'm going to notify the people in charge of this party. I guess she has a point. No reason to stick around here moping. I'd better get home. Excuse me, pal. I'm looking for a fellow named Tom Walsh. You know him by any chance? I'm afraid not, sorry. 
Perfectly fine. I suppose I'll just have to wait for him upstairs. Haven't I seen that face somewhere before? Where is everybody? Surely this hurricane can't be that serious a threat. 